Hello darlings, um, welcome to another video. This is just gonna be a short one. I just wanted to do a couple of uh, shorter videos whilst I'm working on my uh, longer one, which is gonna be another Doctor Who one. I wanna go into some costume design stuff. Um, I am also sat on my floor today because change of scenery. Um, I won't keep doing it like this, but it's probably better for the sound. And since I wanna be reading you a little bit of um, early Star Trek fan fiction. I thought sound might be more important um, than background necessarily. So I am going to be reading The Alternate by Laura Harris, which was published in Spockanalia Volume 3. Um, this fanfic uh, actually prompted some complaints um to the fanzine uh because people thought it was a little bit too raunchy if you want to find out more about uh fanzines history of fanzines i got another video that you can watch um <laughs> it'll feel weird because i'm filming on my phone so i can see my own face which is actually much worse than not being able to see it um and also with this pop filter my mouth just disappears but um, hopefully the sound will be better in this video. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, anyway, yeah, we're going to be reading some fan fiction. There's nothing NSFW in it. No, um, naughty words. Um, so yeah, enjoy. The Alternate by Laura Harris. Author's note. This is about the alternate Spock of Mirror Mirror or someone very like him. I originally intended just to write something raunchy to get something out of my system, but it turned into something else. I'm just a hopeless romantic. I am not really paying much attention to what I, what we, are doing. Sometimes it is like this. I am simply ensuring my position, making sure that his attention does not wander to another woman, although I find that somehow unlikely. He has grown accustomed to me, and in many ways he is a creature of habit, he likes his routine to preserve its sameness, which is the mark of order and stability. At first I was a violent jolt to his system, but now I am accepted. A part of things. Indeed, almost taken for granted sometimes. But that suits me too. At least I do not have to bear the rage that would accompany his jealousy. It is warm in the cabin. He keeps it that way because it is more comfortable for him. Warm and dry permeated with a soft red glow and the faint smell of incense, which gradually blurs into the consciousness until a world of other than faint red glowings and shadings and slightly spicy dry air seems the dream world. It never seems to be fully light in this room, always the shadings and shadows, a half-dark shadow world inhabited by creatures of unguessable origins and habits, a land apart, a small island in the midst of this bustling, glowing, well-lit, constantly active ship we call the Enterprise. No sounds penetrate from outside, or if they do, it is only faintly, reminding us of our isolation and difference but not intruding upon it. His breath is hot against my ear, his teeth fastening gently but insistently on the lobe, causing unbelievable sensations everywhere in my body. Getting back at me, yeah? because of my inability to leave his ears alone. I am strangely aware of each sound, each movement. I am not really uncomfortable, because my body is trained to work on an automatic pilot, as it were, even when my mind is totally free. I am hiding somewhere, observing us, tittering, calculating, thinking that it is sometimes very odd to be a woman and so aloof, so unaffected, really, and how he would be angered, perhaps, or perhaps just surprised if he knew how little I was affected. I feel no tenderness for him. No love, just... What? Perhaps what I would feel if he had been in sickbay, forbidden to read, and I had, on his orders, slipped a tape to him to be viewed secretly after Dr. McCoy had retired. I obey his orders. Sometimes hesitantly, sometimes unwillingly, sometimes with much useless muttering. But I obey. Many of us find ourselves in such a situation, have such an arrangement. It is often quite advantageous to belong to a man who wields some power on the ship or elsewhere in the fleet. Spock is not actively engaged in a power struggle of any sort here, but he has powerful allies, family connections elsewhere that make him a man to be reckoned with. 
He likes his life here. His job is interesting and provides constant challenges for his searching, grasping mind. Sometimes, it seems, he requires respite from his usual iron control that enables him to tap and channel his tremendous energies in exactly the right direction. This can take the form of self-induced trances, or an oddly graceful type of calisthenics which I have never seen anyone else do. And sometimes it is a woman. I am only one of many forms of diversion for him, perhaps the least satisfactory in some ways. I do not understand why he has chosen me, or any woman, but then he is not likely to answer if I ask, so I remain silent. He is so very different from the others, in many ways. He can be oddly gentle, sometimes taking my hand as we walk along together, almost shyly, like a young boy, sometimes brushing it with his lips, like a courtly hero paying homage to a great lady. Sometimes he sits cross-legged with the lute in his lap, strumming it softly, singing strange old songs of his homeland in a deep voice that seems to float across the warm stillness and brush gently against me like a dark velvet curtain stirred by a faint breeze. Other times he is as hard and unyielding and fierce as a glittering metal blade, and his small dark eyes hold a dull gleam like polished mahogany. Sometimes I fear him. Always I am glad to be somehow in his favour. He is saying something to me. I have allowed my attention to wander and he realises that something is wrong. I should know better. He has shifted his position slightly and is inquiring if I am uncomfortable. Strange. He is capable of insisting that I do almost anything that occurs to him if his curiosity demands fulfilment, but he will then be quite gentle and, as long as he is satisfied with the results, take pains to ensure that I am not hurt or made to suffer acute discomfort. The point is, after all, not cruelty, but satisfaction. For him, the two do not necessarily go together. I pretend not to hear or understand his question, and with a small half-groan, half-growl, dig my fingernails into his ribs. He is obviously satisfied that I am not in distress and says no more. His lips wander up from my ear, across my cheek, brush my lips, the gentle movement of his lips and hands punctuated steadily, rhythmically, by more virile caresses. You bearded virile bastard. It is I who will penetrate to the centre of you and learn your secrets. Learn if you are truly a lord to be feared, a black-maned lion who roars and rules, or, or one of us with fears and weaknesses, how very strange. It is like having a tooth pulled while thoroughly numbed, feeling pressure but no pain. I feel individual movements, but they seem to have no relation to the feeling that permeates my body. There is no localised sensation, but a tingling, nerve-jangling, fiery, desperate feeling that spreads, meets itself, overlaps and flows back again towards the source. I am like a basin, being filled by the overflow from a smaller basin above it, and at the very top, the fountain head that flows into the first basin, which fills itself to bursting, and then gives its overflow to its sister basin below. There seems to be no end to it. It is an eternal process, beginning nowhere, ending nowhere, like the universe itself. For one second only. One blazing white second that illuminates like a flash from a photon torpedo, I know. If I find them, unearth the buried secrets of your innermost heart, I will shield the gaping holes with my body and let you continue to walk proudly, roaring fear into the timid hearts around you. It is I who have given up my secrets to you, told you by the fierceness and madness of my giving which of my lies not to believe. You have won again. I hope you enjoyed that little foray into... 1960s sexy Spock fanfiction. Um, I even did a little beehive. Uh, it's not very good though, but you know, thought I'd try. <laughs> yeah, so uh, leave a like, leave a comment, or don't. I'm an actor currently, uh, so I don't have much money. <laughs> so I'll put my Ko-Fi below. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye.